Today I'm going to show you how I improved my credit score by 144 points in a very short space of time. Hi guys, my name is Anna, welcome back to my channel. Today, as I've said, I'm going to talk you through the main things that helped me improve my credit rating in a short space of time, but also just generally over the long term. So I used to have a really bad credit rating and over time it's improved and then dropped and then improved. <laughs> but I recently logged in to check my score and it had gone up by 144 points, which is brilliant because when I first got my mortgage and stuff, I've mentioned this in some of my videos before, I had some, not issues with the mortgage, but it did make a difference in terms of the fact that my credit rating wasn't as high as I would have liked it to be. For today's video, I wanted to enlist the help of Thando from Skilled Finances. He runs a blog with his wife about finances. I will let him tell you more about himself in his blog. Hi, I'm Thando from Skilled Finances, where we talk all things money for young adults and for couples. And we really want people to be financially confident, to manage their money and to reach their life goals. You can find us at skilledfinances.com and on Instagram at Skilled Finances, would love to see you there. Just like Anna, we've also had experiences with negative credit in the past, worked on it and improved it, which has allowed us to eventually get a really good score and be able to get on the property ladder. Hopefully those tips that we're sharing with you today will help you to do exactly the same. So we're gonna take you through the steps to take if you want to improve your credit rating or just build a new one if you're new to the country or just starting out in life. <laughs> So tip number one is to register on the electoral roll. This is really important. It might not seem like a big thing, especially if, for example, like me, you weren't eligible to vote initially. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I was actually born in Poland and I actually only got my British citizenship a few years ago in terms of British passport and stuff like that. So for a lot of people, when I mention to them that they have to register on the electoral roll, the first question I tend to get from people who aren't actually born British is, but I can't vote. And the answer is, well, you can't vote in main elections, but you can vote in local elections and you can still be on the electoral roll. So being on the electoral roll actually helps lenders to check your address, make sure that you are living where you say you are living, that they can actually get in touch with you should you default on the loan, that's really important. But also the time that you are registered on the electoral roll at a certain address will help show lenders that you are stable in where you are living. So things like you know issues with paying the rent or the mortgage or anything like that all play a part so being stable in your life is always a good thing for your credit rating the second tip is around your account history and your payment history when it comes to your account history one of the big things that they look for is how long you have had your accounts for and these are how long have they been open and active and so if you have a current account that you've had since you were a student and you know 10 years later you still have that account that's 10 years of history that's on your credit report and that 10 years alone goes a long way towards your credit score. And so if you're constantly switching banks, for instance, and you're closing current account, opening another one every couple of years, when it comes to your length of time when you have an open and active account and you're shortening that, that could then have a negative impact on your credit report. So keep an eye on that to make sure that you're essentially keeping at least one account open for a good length of time which is a couple of years. I mean, when it comes to credit report, they look at six year history. And the second thing is payment history. With payment history, you want to essentially make sure that you're building a good history with your payments. You're paying on time, every time, the amounts that are owed. If you're missing payments or if you're paying late, this will negatively impact and influence your credit score. Any missed payments that you have will be shown in your credit report. And if you miss more than one or more than two or more than three missed payments, what may end up happening is that the company will end up closing down your account with them and showing that on your report as a closed account, but it will show as a default. A default is essentially whereby you've had multiple missed payments that you haven't paid back and it's been multiple months where you refuse to pay back, whether it's a debt or a phone contract, and that default will then last in your credit file for six years until it is fully repaid. The company may no longer chase you every single month for that money, but on your credit report, it will show up. Alternatively, what may end up happening is that you get something called a CCJ, which is a similar fashion to a default. 
essentially defaults and CCJs are all birthed out of missed payments and you not paying back the amounts that you should pay and the company is essentially taking that step further a, a more serious step further to reporting on your credit file that it, this has gone beyond a missed payment and it's now where you are refusing to pay back that money and that again will negatively impact your credit score so tip number three is to stop applying for new credit cards or loans in a short period of time so this is one of the things that I did wrong. I applied for a card and then I got rejected. They didn't really give me a reason why, but they rejected me and then I applied for another credit card. And although I got accepted, that hard search that was performed for the initial card was on my file, then followed by another application to another credit card. So that really dragged down my credit rating. Applying for multiple lines of credit, such as credit cards or loans, will just signal to lenders that you are in some sort of financial difficulty because you are applying to multiple things at once. This actually can include certain buy now, pay later schemes. So it's really important that you check the terms and conditions of any such scheme that you take. There can be some really serious consequences if you don't actually pay these on time. There's been a lot of stuff that I've seen around about services such as, I think it's called Klarna, and things really impacting people's credit ratings and people not realizing just what they've signed up for when they when they actually sign up for this. And actually, as a side note, many people don't realize that actually for some of these services, they do actually run a proper credit check as well. A good tip for this is many cards will have an eligibility checker. For example, I definitely know that the American Express card offers this and what it is, is you enter all these details and they have algorithms that figure out your almost like likelihood of being accepted onto the card. This isn't a definite yes or no. That's the really important thing to bear in mind, but it does give you an idea of how likely it is that you will be accepted. So for example, if you do the Amex one and your eligibility comes back as really low, the likelihood is that when you apply for that Amex card, you won't be accepted and therefore your credit rating will be affected negatively. Tip number four is to reduce your credit utilization ratio. Credit utilization ratio takes your total available credit and takes your total amount owed on that credit and essentially comparing those two figures, what is the ratio? It is advised to keep this ratio under 30%. Now in the real world, what this means is that if you have a credit card that is £1,000 credit limit, that means you have £1,000 available to you to spend. If you owed £800 on that credit card, then your ratio is 80%. On the flip side, if you owed £100, your ratio is 10%. So if we're saying keep that under 30%, that means £300 is the amount that you're looking to owe maximum at any given time. The reason this influences your credit score is because a higher percentage suggests in the eyes of the lender that you're struggling to pay back your debts or that your debts are funding your day-to-day -day lifestyle. And this then looks more negative when it comes to credit reporting and credit scoring because lenders would feel that if you were to borrow more money, you would be in the same position again and they won't be able to get their money back that they've lent to you. However, if the percentage is lower, then what that means in the eyes of the lender is that they will look at that and think, actually, you are able to manage your money, you're managing your debts, your debts are not funding your lifestyle, and you are able to pay back a new form of debt that you want to borrow. And this is how the credit utilization ratio influences your credit score. Now, a quick win here is that if you have a credit card and your utilization ratio is quite high already, there's two ways to go about it. Number one is to reduce the amount of debt. And if you can do that, absolutely do that. To be fair, you should be doing that. However, a quick win that you can try here is to apply for a second credit card. If you have one credit card and you have a thousand pounds limit on that credit card and you owe 800 pounds, your ratio is 80%. If you applied for a second credit card and got that credit card, and let's just say it's also a thousand pounds limit, your limit overall is now 2000 based on those two cards that you have, even though the amount of debt that you owe is still 800, 800 of 2000 is 40%. So instantly you've reduced your credit utilization ratio from 80% to 40% by getting a second credit card. However, I would warn here that this will only be of long-term benefit to you if you're gonna be doing two things. Number one, you're not going to be spending any money at all on this second card. And number two, you're going to be reducing that 800 pounds debt anyway. 
So tip number four is to reduce your credit utilization ratio. So tip number five is check your reports regularly and to check them properly. So this is actually something that affected me when I first moved into my new property here. I realized after checking my report that the address on a file was actually incorrect. It was a different apartment. It was the same building block, but it was a different apartment. So I actually had to write to the credit reference agencies and say to them, look, this address is incorrect. This is my actual address. You can see it in like all my other statements and things. And it took a good amount of time for them to fix it. But having the correct details is really important. And although you might think that because everything is done automatically, it should be correct, but that's not always the case. Mistakes will always happen and it's on you to check your reports regularly and check that everything is okay. This includes simple things from name and address and date of birth and stuff like that, but also things more specific, such as the total amounts that you have on your credit cards or your loans, mortgages, the spending that it's got against you. A lot of the reports will show a credit history for things like, for example, mobile phone payments, and it will show you, yes, you've got a clean history of payments and stuff like that. So it's really important just once every couple months, go through everything and make sure that you are happy. Especially since now, it's actually free to check your credit rating in quite a few places. You've got places like Experian and Credit Karma. They're the two that I tend to use to check my credit rating for free. You can also pay to get a more thorough rating and I've also done that before just to go through everything in a lot more detail. But even if you just check the free reports, that will be better than nothing. Tip number six is something that's fairly new. It's called the Rental Exchange Initiative and it's been brought on by Experian. In simple terms, this takes your rent payments and counts them towards your payment history on your credit report. Again, a positive payment history is what builds your credit score. Now, this is completely free for you as a tenant and completely free for your landlord, which is great. And the benefit of this is that if you're one of the people who always pays their rent on time, every time, well, you might as well have that show on your credit report, right? And build your credit score. Now, there's two ways you can join this. The first way is to ask your landlord to report your rent payments to the Rental Exchange Initiative. The second way is to do it yourself, to report your own rental payments to the Rental Exchange Initiative. Again, you can do this on the Experian website to read up all about how it works. But the beauty about this, in my case, is that you're not applying for a credit card or a loan or trying something different that you're not currently doing. You're just leveraging what you already do, which is paying for your rent, and having that used as part of your credit report to build your credit file. Again, for this to be of full benefit, you have to be paying your rent on time every single time because if you do miss payments, well, that will then show on your credit report as missed payments. The only key thing to keep in mind with this is that this is an Experian initiative. And in the UK, we have three companies that basically build your credit report. The other two are Equifax and TransUnion. So this being an Experian initiative means that only Experian can see this and can put this on the Experian credit report Whereas your Equifax credit report and your TransUnion credit report, this is not in there. And this is quite a key thing to remember because if you're going to apply for a mortgage, let's say, and the, the lender only do their credit checks with Equifax, that means this will have no influence in that application. But if they did do their application and credit checks with Experian, then these rental payments will show up on that application and they can be able to see that, yes, you have been paying your rent on time every time and that just improves your chances of being accepted when you make these applications. So have a look at the Rental Exchange Initiative if you are a renter and if it's for you, check it out. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really hope that was helpful and that it helps some of you improve your credit score and therefore get better deals and stuff. Make sure you check out Thando's blog and maybe you can encourage him in the comments below to set up his own YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Bye.